When you think of rich women, celebrities like Rihanna or Oprah Winfrey come to mind, right? Well, the truth is that the wealthiest women in the world, who are all ultra-billionaires by the way, prefer to maintain a much lower profile than celebrities. With a combined net worth of nearly $500 billion, these women have earned vast fortunes, and they have managed to climb up the ranks of wealthy people using just their wits and grit. In today's video, I will be taking a look at the richest women in the world, their success stories, and just how they are spending their immense wealth. Let's mingle with the high and mighty, shall we? Number 10. Abigail Pierpont Johnson Kicking off our list of the women with the biggest bags is an American businesswoman you could easily walk past on the streets without realizing just how influential she is. Abigail Johnson may not have her pictures splashed across the world's top magazines, but she controls a fortune that easily makes her one of the richest people in the world. The success story of this 61-year-old billionaire can be traced back to an old Massachusetts family. Her grandfather was Edward Crosby Johnson II, the founder of Fidelity investments. The company is a multinational financial services corporation based in Boston, Massachusetts, and it is one of the largest asset managers in the world, with assets that sum up to about $11.8 trillion under its administration. Before Abigail's grandfather passed away, he had made a massive fortune of about $8 billion, and over the years, Abigail has easily surpassed that. Since she became the acting CEO of the company in 2014, after taking over from her father, Edward Ned Johnson III, she has amassed a staggering wealth that is estimated to be more than $22 billion. The very modest billionaire businesswoman owns an estimated 24.5% stake in Fidelity Investments, while the rest of the Johnson family own a 49% stake in the privately held company. Abigail's father, Edward Johnson III, was the chair emeritus of the family firm, basically an honorary title for a retiree, before his death last year in 2022. He was still the chair emeritus when Abigail was given full control, and after his death, she was named the chairperson of the company, while also retaining her position as CEO and president. Not only does she now have full control over a company with 45,000 employees worldwide, but Abigail is also the chair of its international sister company, Fidelity International, and a member of the board of Breakthrough Energy Ventures, a corporation founded by Bill Gates. The positions Abigail now holds are a far cry from her first job at Fidelity Investments, which was answering phone calls back when she was still in high school. Dating as far back as her high school days, Abigail worked hard to climb her way up the corporate ladder, despite her status as the boss's daughter. The billionaire businesswoman worked at the firm for 26 years, starting out with various obscure positions before gradually taking on more serious roles. With this experience, she developed a thorough knowledge of the company's dynamics. Today, at the top of the corporate ladder as CEO, President, and Chief chairwoman, Abigail has grown the company in her charge and has acquired immense wealth. If the amount of money nestled in Johnson's pockets is anything to go by, she definitely should be living an ultra-luxury life. But truthfully, not much is known about her private life. Abigail herself said that she was raised to keep out of the public eye and let the results of her hard work speak for themselves. So despite being the richest person in America's New England region, the sixth most powerful woman in the world, and one of the wealthiest women around, Abigail Johnson remains down to earth. She takes commercial flights rather than private jets, queues up to hire a car when needed like everybody else, and pretty much stays off the radar of the general public. Johnson may not be living the ultra-luxurious life as far as everybody can see, but that does not mean she doesn't spend big when giving. She supports various charities, as well as art projects. She even serves meals in a Boston homeless shelter that she supports, on occasion. I guess the Johnson name should be just as known for philanthropy as it is for the massive wealth behind it. Number 9. Iris Balbina Fontbona Gonzalez Born in 1942, Iris Balbina Fontbona lived a relatively normal life well into her teenage years. But everything changed when she met Andronico Luxich Abaroa, the Chilean businessman who founded Luxich Group. At the time of their meeting, Iris was only 17 years old, and Luxich was the richest person in Chile, as well as the 132nd richest person in the world. 
world, with a net worth of about $4.2 billion. And Tronico Luxich was 15 years older than Iris, but despite the age gap, the two fell in love and eventually tied the knot when Iris was 20. They were married for around 40 years. Marrying one of the world's richest men came with a ton of benefits, but it wasn't until Andronico Luxich Abaroa passed away in 2005 from cancer that Von Bona acquired the bulk of her enormous wealth. Although a sizable amount of her late husband's business went to their three sons, Guillermo, Jean-Paul, and Andronico, Von Bona definitely got her chunk of the empire. Alongside her children, she controls Antofagasta, Luxich Group's mining group, which also doubles as one of the largest mining companies in the world. Through their publicly traded company, Kinyenko, Iris and her sons also control a Chilean bank called Banco de Chile, Medeco, a copper products manufacturer, CCU, the country's largest beverage manufacturer, and a shipping company called CSAV. With most of the family business under her control, Fontbona has proven herself to be quite the businesswoman, ushering the Luxich group to greater heights. Away from the manufacturing industry, some of Iris's other businesses include a pair of luxury hotel chains and a luxury resort in Croatia. She even acquired a 70% stake in the Chilean television station Canal 13 shortly after her husband's death. Although much of her power in the hugely successful Luxich group appears to be indirect, it is important to note that the major business decisions impacting the company, largely run by her son, Andronico Luxich Craig, need to be approved by Font Bona first. This is why the billionaire business magnet has maintained her net worth of $23.2 billion today, and why she is easily one of the most powerful women in the world. Despite Font Bona's attempts to stay out of the spotlight and the fact that she divides her time between Chile, London, and Liechtenstein, back at home in Chile, she is known for her philanthropic nature as well as her wealth. In 2015, Font Bona dedicated a record-smashing $3.9 million to the annual Chilean Telethon, a charity event that was seeking aid for children with physical disabilities. She also appeared on television to promote a telethon event that took place before a live audience, donating her time as well as her wealth. The year after, she went even bigger by donating $5.5 million. Aside from going a long way to helping those in need, Font Bona's donation also set a record for the charity event she gave it to, in terms of funds raised. Number 8. Mackenzie Scott This bright-eyed soccer mom is an American novelist who in 2006 won an American Book Award for her 2005 debut novel, The Testing of Luther Albright. While Mackenzie is a talented writer with best-selling books, it was her infamous divorce from the billionaire founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, that truly propelled her up the ranks of the world's richest people. It all started in 1993, when Scott and Bezos tied the knot. In 1994, they moved to Seattle and started Amazon together. According to several reports, Scott was a key player in the company's early days. She was one of Amazon's first employees and was heavily involved in building up Amazon. She not only worked on the company's name, business plan, accounts, and shipping early orders, but she also negotiated the company's first freight contract. Around 1996, when things started to pick up, Scott shifted to a less involved role in the now booming family business, preferring to focus on the family and her literary career. Despite the fact that she chose to stay out of the spotlight all those years, Scott held a 4% stake in Amazon until her divorce from Jeff Bezos. The divorce in 2019, which was overly publicized, left Scott with $35.6 billion in Amazon stock, while her now former husband retained 75% of the couple's Amazon stock. With that move, she became the third wealthiest woman in the world and one of the wealthiest people overall in the same year. In July 2022, Scott was ranked the 22nd richest person in the world by Forbes, with a net worth estimated at $36 billion, and by September 2020, she was named the world's richest woman. In December of the same year, her net worth was estimated estimated to be $62 billion, the highest a woman had ever made at that time. It was not all rosy, however, because Scott's jaw-dropping net worth came with an overwhelming amount of backlash. After her divorce from Jeff, Scott changed her name from Mackenzie Bezos to Mackenzie Scott, with the new surname derived from her middle name. By May 2019, shortly after she announced the terms of the divorce on social media, Mackenzie signed the Giving Pledge and promised to give away at least half of her wealth throughout her lifetime. True to her words, between July 2020 and November 2022, Scott has reportedly given away $14.4 billion to nearly 1,600 
nonprofits. She once made a $5.8 billion payout in charitable gifts in 2020, one of the largest annual distributions by a private individual to working charities. She donated a further $2.7 billion in 2021 and has continued to make large donations to good causes worldwide. Mackenzie's fondness for donating to charities has put a big dent in her bank account, which is why her current net worth has fallen to $25.3 billion from the height that it was originally at. Number 7. Suzanne Hanna Ursula Clatten Next up is Suzanne Hanna Ursula Clatten, a German billionaire heiress. She is the daughter of Herbert Quant and his third wife Johanna. Being born into one of Germany's most influential families gave Suzanne a head start in life that many can only dream of. Back in the day, the Quant family saved the world-famous carmaker BMW from bankruptcy and made a ton of profit doing so. Profit that trickled down several generations later. Suzanne was born in Bad Hamburg, West Germany, and when she came of age, she gained a degree in business finance. After graduation, Suzanne worked for an advertising agency in Frankfurt for some years. Before opting to further her education at the University of Buckingham, she received an MBA in advertising from IMD Business School in Lausanne. With her sparkling portfolio, Suzanne, who had already come to be known as a budding businesswoman, gained further business experience working in London with the Dresdner Bank. She also worked with the Munich branch of management consultants called McKinsey & Company and the bank Bankhaus Reuschel & Company. While it is worth noting that Suzanne made a name for herself through her own hard work and determination, her rise to the top came after her father's death. After the passing of Herbert Quant, Suzanne inherited his 50.1% stake in the pharmaceutical and chemicals manufacturing company Altana. By doing so, she gained billionaire status. Her late father also left her a 12.5% stake in the car company BMW, which, following the death of her mother in 2015, increased to 19.2%. Along with her brother, Stefan Quant, who owns nearly 24% of the car company, Suzanne was appointed to the supervisory board of BMW in 1997. Using her position on Altana's supervisory board and her experience as an economist, Clatton helped transform Altana into a world-class corporation. This transformation earned the company a spot on the German DAX list of 30 top companies. Today, the billionaire heiress is the sole owner of Altana, and the company is said to rake in more than $2.5 billion in annual sales. She also holds stakes in Entrust and the SGL Group, bringing her net worth to a little under $28 billion. While you would only need a Google search to find out Suzanne's net worth, she certainly does a good job of keeping her personal life out of the news. What we do know, however, is that she met her husband, Jan Klatten, while she was interning with BMW. It is reported that during the time they got to know each other, Suzanne went by the name Kant instead of her real name. Of course, she revealed the truth later on, but still, who doesn't love a good romance plot? The pair married in 1990 in Kitzbühel, lived in Munich, and got separated in 2018. Clatten had three children with her ex-husband and hasn't been in the mood to find love again since her last brief love affair ended up in a big blackmail scandal. Number 6. Georgina, aka Gina, Hope Reinhardt in addition to being one of the world's richest women, Georgina Reinhardt is also Australia's richest living citizen. Gina built up her massive fortune as an Australian mining magnet, businesswoman, and, of course, an heiress. The Australian heiress is the executive chairman of Hancock Prospecting, a privately owned mineral exploration and extraction company founded by her father. Gina was the only daughter of Langley Frederick George Lang Hancock, and when he died in 1992, instead of leaving her a fortune, he left her with a bankrupt estate and a financially distressed company. Gina succeeded her father as executive chairman of Hancock Prospecting, and soon enough, she built the company back up, transforming it into the largest private company in Australia. When Reinhardt took over Hancock Prospecting, its total net worth was said to be around $50 million. Fast forward to 2018, and the same company was generating revenue of $6 billion, a number that has now increased to $7 billion in more 
recent times. In addition to their other business affiliations, Hancock Prospecting now owns 50% of Hope Downs, an iron ore mining complex located in eastern Australia. The company gets 50% of the profits generated by the four Hope Downs mines, and with the annual production capacity of the mines sitting at at least 30 million tons of iron, that's about $500 million going to Hancock Prospecting, and ultimately, Gina Reinhardt each year. If there's one thing the world's wealthiest people have in common, it's their desire to diversify their income, and Gina is no different. In addition to being a mining magnet, Gina is also Australia's second-largest cattle producer, with a portfolio of properties spread across the country. In May 2021, a report published by The Guardian showed that Reinhardt was the single largest landholder in Australia. Thanks to her intelligence and diligence, Gina's wealth reached around $29.7 billion in 2012, placing her ahead of Walmart heiress Christy Walton as the world's richest woman. Gina's new net worth also earned her a spot on the Forbes list of the world's 100 most powerful women. Thanks to her deep pockets, Reinhardt has been named one of the world's richest women multiple times over the last decade. In addition to worldwide recognition, Reinhardt's vast fortune has provided her with the opportunity to support numerous causes that pique her interest. One of such causes is sports. The mining heiress plays a significant role in Australia's Olympic efforts, and she is also the largest non-government donor in the country's Olympic history. Unlike some other billionaires on this list, Reinhardt is as passionate about luxury as she is about charity. In 2021, she reportedly paid about 34 million Australian dollars for a seaside home called the Webb House. Seeing how she has a net worth of $28.5 billion, Gina probably didn't mind spending millions on acquiring her dream home. Number 5. Miriam Adelson Adelson is an Israeli-American physician who once served a mandatory army service as a medical officer at Nes Zayana, a town in Israel. She earned a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology and Genetics from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and a medical degree from Tel Aviv University's Sackler Medical School. After divorcing her first husband, Adelson went to Rockefeller University in 1986 as an associate physician specializing in drug addiction. It was while studying at Rockefeller University that she met Sheldon Adelson, a billionaire businessman who owned a lot of businesses, including the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. The Las Vegas Sands, which operates from Nevada, is an American casino and resort company that contributed largely to Sheldon's enormous net worth of around $30 billion. Adelson got married to Sheldon in 1991, and after he died in 2021, she inherited the casino company and became one of the richest people in the world. Through her majority ownership of the Las Vegas Sands, Adelson now owns more than half of the gambling empire, which in turn controls several casinos in Singapore and Macau. The billionaire heiress is also the current publisher of the newspaper called Israel Hayom, and is on the board of trustees at the University of Southern California, where she acts as a voting member. Since taking up her late husband's position as head of the gambling empire, Adelson has been a regular feature of Forbes magazine and various other wealth-ranking lists. As of June 2021, she was the 44th richest person, 5th richest woman, and richest Israeli in the world, with an estimated net worth of $36.3 billion, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. She now ranks higher at Forbes' 36th position for the richest people in the world, and her net worth has climbed up to $35.6 billion since 2022. With all that money in tow, you can't expect that this billionaire must have made some big donations to charity. Adelson has been known to support charitable causes here and there. However, she mostly gives to political endeavors. Back when her husband was still alive, she and Sheldon Adelson donated about $180 million to Republican campaigns and political action committees in 2020. She is also credited with influencing her late husband's political views on Israel and was one of the financial backers for the inauguration of former President Donald Trump. In 2013, Adelson received an honorary citizenship of Jerusalem and she was later awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Donald Trump himself in 2018. Number 4. Jacqueline Mars If you are a fan of candy like M&M's, Skittles, Twix, or Milky Way bars, then you have probably contributed a dollar or two to the wealth of this very rich woman. Jacqueline Mars is the daughter of Audrey Ruth and Forrest Mars Sr., and the granddaughter of Frank C. Mars, founder of the American candy company Mars Incorporated. As a member of the Mars family, Jacqueline Mars owns an estimated one-third of Mars, the world's 
largest candy maker. Her shares of Mars Inc. and other assets were estimated by Forbes magazine in January 2019 to be worth $23.5 billion, making her, at that time, the 18th richest American and 34th on the list of the world's billionaires. Jacqueline Mars was active in Mars Incorporated for nearly 40 years, dating as far back as 1982, when she joined the company as food product group president until 2001, when she retired. After her retirement, Jacqueline continued to serve on the board of the company until 2016, when she decided to enjoy the unbothered life of a billionaire. Well, after her retirement in 2019, Forbes listed her as the wealthiest resident living in Virginia, with an estimated $28.1 billion net worth. Today, she remains one of the richest women anywhere, with a net worth of $38.3 billion. With ample time on her hands to focus on her interests, the Mars heiress serves on the board of the National Archives, and was even formerly on the board of the Washington National Opera and the National Sporting Library and Fine Arts Museum. She is a trustee of the U.S. Equestrian Team, and owns a working organic farm that is protected in perpetuity by the Land Trust of Virginia. Number 3. Alice Louise Walton as the only daughter of Walmart's founder, Sam Walton, Alice Walton was the first in line to inherit a fortune that would make her one of the richest people in the world. That didn't stop her from going beyond every expectation to make more of herself. After graduating from Trinity University, Alice started working at Walmart, but she left it to start a career as a broker. She wasn't very good at that, so she resigned and became an equity analyst and a money manager. She headed investment activities for the family-owned Arabist Bank Group. And in 1988, Alice founded an investment bank named Llama Company as a subsidiary of Walton Enterprises. Inspired by an actual llama her mother received as a present, the bank ran for 10 years before closing in 1998. The Llama Company wrote bonds and managed assets as well as loans to other businesses. As the bank's president, chairwoman, and CEO, Alice soon became the first person to chair the Northwest Arkansas Council and played a major role in the development of the Northwest Arkansas Regional Airport, which opened in 1998. It was in that same year that the Llama Company closed down, and she resigned from the high finance life to spend more time enjoying her family and her horses. Alice ended up relocating to the farm she had established in Texas within the year, with 3,200 acres, a rocking W ranch that soon became one of the best breeders of horses. The Walmart heiress retired with a net worth of about $57.4 billion, making her the 19th richest person and the second richest woman in the world at that time, according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index. In recent years, Alice has been nudged down a step and has become the third richest woman in the world. With that much wealth sitting around, despite the fact that she mainly resided in Texas, Alice made sure to visit Bentonville to satisfy her love for art. She founded the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, which is a particular interest of the Walmart billionaire. Back in 2005, Alice purchased a painting worth $35 million from the New York Public Library, an American American classic by Asher Brown Durand. She has spent many more millions purchasing artworks, but that is not the only thing Walton spends her vast wealth on. Alice is also just as big on her philanthropic deeds as her father was back when he was still alive. Since his death, Alice has volunteered and actively supported many different charitable causes that cut across all works of life. The Walton Family Foundation supports education and economic development in the Northwest Arkansas region, and also environmental conservation in the area. Number 2. Julia Margaret Flesher Coke what started out as a blind date in 1991 blossomed into so much more when the two parties involved ran into each other again six months later. They began dating and eventually got married in 1996. If you haven't figured it out yet, the two parties are Julia Margaret Flesher and David Koch. The pair met in January 1991, but the first date did not leave Margaret with a good impression. The two would meet again at a party later that year, and she most likely had a change of heart because they started dating. Julia stopped working in 1993, and eventually got married to David in May 1996. The wedding took place at David Koch's house on Meadow Lane in Southampton. After having three kids together, David Koch would sadly pass away in 2019, leaving Julia Koch and their three children, David Jr., Mary Julia, and John Mark, with 42% of the family business. The family business was Koch Industries, an American privately held multinational conglomerate based in Wichita, Kansas, that is the second largest privately held company in the United States. 
points. The company, which now mostly belongs to Mrs. Coke, owns subsidiaries that are involved in the manufacturing, refining, and distribution of petroleum, chemicals, energy, fiber, intermediates and polymers, minerals, fertilizer, pulp and paper, chemical technology equipment, cloud computing, finance, raw materials trading, and investments. Due to her position, Julia owns Flint Hills Resources, Georgia Pacific, Guardian Industries, Infor, Invista, KBX, Coke AG and Energy Solutions, Coke Engineered Solutions, Coke Investments Group, Coke Minerals and Trading, and Molex. The firm employs 122,000 people in 60 countries, with about half of its business being located in the United States and the rest worldwide. The billionaire widow is also the president of the David H. Coke Foundation and was formerly on the board of directors of the School of American Ballet. Along with her late husband, Julia made huge donations to institutions such as the Lincoln Center, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. With a net worth of $59 billion, Julia has been included on the list of the top 10 richest females in the world since she took over Coke Industries and remains the second richest woman today. She is, of course, also a well-known socialite and a philanthropist, but her status as a billionaire is more glaring as ever. Not as glaring as the next entry, who tops the list. Without further ado, number 1. Francoise Betancourt Mayers. At the top of our list is French businesswoman and billionaire heiress Francoise Betancourt Mayers, who has held the title of the world's richest woman since 2022. Away from her billionaire status, Francoise is also a writer, pianist, and philanthropist. Her estimated net worth sits around $79.3 billion, and she sits at the top of the 10 richest females in the world. Francoise is the heiress to the L'Oreal Beauty Empire, a French personal care company. She acquired this massive fortune maker from her grandfather, Eugene Schuler, who was the founder of the company. Her mother, Lillian Betancourt, was, however, the main shareholder. In fact, she was previously considered the richest woman in the world. After the death of her mother in 2017, Francoise inherited around 39.5 billion euros, an amount that has grown by at least 50% in the last five years. Following the death of her mother in 2017, Francoise's fortune is said to have tripled thanks to her investments through through her family holding company, Tethys Invest, and the high valuation of L'Oreal shares. Today, her net worth comfortably sits at double of what it once was. At 69 years old, Francoise leads a discreet life away from the spotlight. She invests her money in things like scientific, artistic, and cultural projects, including the reconstruction of the Notre Dame Cathedral, in which she invested around $220 million. As the richest woman in the world, Francoise takes being discreet seriously. However, the people who have encountered her say her life in Paris is relatively simple. She enjoys the public French parks and does not use private jets for her trips. Her passions are literature and art, and those who are very close to her say that she feels like she is in a golden prison, not knowing what to do with the enormous fortune she controls. Although Francoise has probably never given an interview and has always preferred to stay in the background, her philanthropic activities, which are carried out through the Betancourt Schuler Foundation, of which she is president, are quite known to many. Every year, the Betancourt Awards for Young Researchers are handed out to about 14 new students of science or medicine to aid their postgraduate studies. There is also the sought-after Betancourt Prize, Coup de l'On pour la Recherche Française, which grants public biomedical research laboratories rewards for improving their infrastructure and working conditions for the science researchers each year. Francoise has also supported research projects in neuroscience and autism, and has invested in craft companies. Although the public has has only had glimpses at the life that Francoise lives, it does seem like a rather nice way for the richest woman in the world to spend her money.